Hello, welcome to the 1878 FM podcast. There's just three of us today. David Vitti has been called away for other work. He's minding horses, I believe. Is he? Yeah. Minding yeah. horses. Yeah. Basically, it's the uh, it's the end of the uh, the season. Right. And, so, you know, they've got onto his expertise. Horse expertise. Yeah, horse expertise. Equine. Okay. If you, There's if you, equine qualities. Equine qualities. Fair play. Uh, loves a bit of tack. And, yeah, uh, yeah he's, been, he's been called up to the majors. I honestly think Dave... Could easily pull off a pair of joppers. I mean, and the boots. Uh, wearing them, for wearing it. them. Oh, wearing them, yeah. I honestly think he could. I think he could. Easily. I think he he wouldn't look out of place. I don't think with like mm. a red jacket with the little black hat on the top, no. the white joppers, and the boots to the knee. There I don't re- think he'd look out. There of are place. there are reports that when Dave was younger, he used to hang around Ainsley Racecourse, saying to people, "Can I mind your horse, mate? Two quid, two quid yeah. for your horse." Yeah. Fair that's enough. What, that's what went Fair on. Play. That's what went on. Listen, if that gets you then to, you know, to be on Radio 1 and... and that's where it all started. Dave, that's where it all started. There you go. Fair yeah. play. Fair play. But Sam is here, as always. Sam, how are you, mate? I'm good, thanks. I'm getting my windows done today, so you might hear some background noise. Oh, shoot. If that's what... Just so you know what it is for context, it's uh, it's the window chaps. That's fine. It's definitely not the the old fella putting your bins out and fuming. No, it's not him. No, he stopped no. doing that weirdly since I mentioned it on air. <laughs> oh, well, there you go. I mean, that, that's that's just the podcast. Have for you, you checked on him? Is he still alive? I've checked on him. He he seems happier than ever, whistling as he walks. <laughs> I'm not past surprised. He doesn't have to you put go. your bins yeah. out anymore. That's it. He's realised no. he hasn't had to put your bins out anymore. <laughs> so now he's quite happy. Now he's thinking, <laughs> I'm all right. Now I've got a bit of extra energy. I can get me whistle out. You know, rather than having to save that bit of energy. Is that a euphemism? Well, hey, listen, take it any way you want. He's got more time to get his whistle out. Mm, more energy to expand and exhale his whistle. I suppose at that age you need all the energy you can get. Exactly, so if you're wasting it on Sam's bin, think about the reserves. Mm. Your reserves are low. Yeah. Now the reserves are high, he can whistle. Imagine it this week, he'll have all the bits of wood in it. If Sam has got Sam, for all we know, has no, already got UPVC saying windows. that Sam's doing well in the in the comedy world, so we wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if he was if he was going from what you know double glazing to triple glazing. You know that just wouldn't surprise me about Sam. I don't think there is triple glazing. There is triple in a glazing. Good way. Of course there is. Not, not proper. Of course there is. Not that Irish fella on the telly that also does rugby in this morning. Oh, Craig tried Boyle. to sell it to me. <laughs> oh, does he? Yeah, he's selling them. Yeah, but he's selling it with. It's not. It's no, yeah. the alpha. Remember the no, alpha feather Sam, yeah. the, the, on the advert. Remember all that. Yeah, the feather, remember him. Yeah. Yeah. He has a nice voice. Uh, to be honest, our windows are that crap at the moment. Like, even though currently there's no windows in the in the wall, there's just holes in the wall. There's less mm. of a breeze now than there was <laughs> with the old windows. They were, they were honestly they were absolutely crap. But they weren't wood. They were like um, whatever UPVC is that? Yeah, right? UPVC, I, mate. I think so. But they were dead old rubbish mm. crap. Well, they, they just like everything. They change after a while, mate. Do they? Do they? Yeah, they do. I fit it. You should fit UPVC. We did it then windows years ago. Anyway. <laughs> Everton played the game at the weekend and they won. I mean, I can't believe we've we've got into footy a lot earlier this season when we've mm-hmm. lost than we have today when we can actually talk about Everton winning a game of football in the Premier League. The first time since May. And it is September. The last day of September. It is. Um, good win at the weekend. I mean, the, ironically, I thought it was Everton's worst performance. Good us in the season and we've won the game. So there you go. But uh, a good win. And a much needed win, Pedro. Yeah. Good win. Much needed win. All those words you just said, I've repeated. You have. Um very well prepared. Yeah, it was listen. It was it was a weird one. Um because it was it was basically just like fifteen minutes, wasn't it, of mm. Everton just stepping up. And I and I think I don't know, like I don't know what you think, Sam, but I think most Premier League games that aren't involving the big sort of sides, the Champions League sides, are very much like that. Two very average teams where one steps up for five to ten minutes of the game and that's normally where the win is decided. And the rest of it's just like, there, there isn't, there, they're not end-to-end, there's not loads going on, there's not loads of quality. And it's and and normally it's the, the home side just steps up, the, the crowd get behind them. And... That's how we'll win a lot of, or should win a lot of games this season without there being loads and loads of quality. That's what we've got. That's what we've got, and should have enough of in our in our team to to go on and win those games. So, um, they, you know, as I said, you should get seven or eight of those kind of wins a season. Just drab, drab games where you you find a couple of goals, 
mm-hmm. and and it gets you through. You you know, it's not it, they're not going to be all amazing. I think it's when, like the Bournemouth game, where you you, you make it a little bit more. When it, you do make it a little, or you allow it to become a little bit more exciting, where really you should just shut up shop and have <laughs> subs that just totally just can slow the game down and, and you do all the horrible things and it's not a not a great spectacle. Mm. But that's how you win games of football in the Premier League, isn't it? Just get ahead and then just like kill the game through subs and, and good in-game management. Mm-hmm. I mean, Sam, the relief, obviously, get that first win on the board, get out the bottom three uh, all of that stuff that is important mentally <laughs> for Evertonians we were able to do that at the weekend and obviously the first time under Sean Dykes we've come from behind to win a game and also the first time in which the opposition have scored at Goodison Park that I haven't have won a game since May 2022 so got rid of a couple of those mm-hmm. things from the weekend but big win big win I wasn't thinking about those last two stats that you mentioned until mm. on Saturday. I think I heard them, and, and they really made me happier with the result than the results. I think just the fact that we've got <laughs> those monkeys off our backs because they're yeah. terrible stats to be having. Yeah. You've never come from behind. You've never won a game at home when the opposition have scored because it just means when the opposition do score, we mm. as a collective fan base, we just go, "That's it. That's yeah. over." Yeah. And at half time on Saturday, I thought that was it. I thought I thought it was over. And it's funny how your brain goes to these like trains of thought that you can't really control because this is not what I wanted to happen but in my head at half time 1-0 down we're playing utterly utterly dire mm. and I started to think well we're going to lose this game because we never come from behind and mm. they scored and we never win when the team scores a good soon and all of this stuff subconsciously in my head and then I thought well it probably means the manager will get sacked mm-hmm. so then we'll get a different manager so then I'm <laughs> thinking about all of this and of course we come out second half and very early on score mm. and then get a second and then and then sort of looked, I don't know if in controls a bit a bit much, but we didn't really look in danger until mm. I thought the last sort of five, six minutes when we just seemed to be pumping it forwards mm. with, and no one was holding it up. It wasn't sticking to Dom at all in the, no. in the last sort of five minutes. Um, but, I mean, I, I agree with what Pedro was saying just about those, those because most Premier League games, people talk about that. what was the story of the game, what was the narrative, and I think Ped's right. Like, there, there often isn't. I mean, if you got Man City playing against a, a lower team, they're going to dominate the ball. They're going to they're going to have possession. The narrative will be: Can the team keep them out or keep hold of a lead or whatever? You know, what, mm-hmm. like what Arsenal were trying to do the other week. Not that they're a lesser team, of course. And then other games, you know, like the Bournemouth game. That narrative we allowed to become like a Hollywood blockbuster narrative. Whereas mm-hmm. what I think most games there is no narrative. The narrative is: Can you score in the ten minute window that you're you're on top? And can you weather the storm when they've got that seven, eight minute window where they're on top? Mm. And the rest of the time, you know, it, it wasn't a great game on Saturday, was it? But um, Palace looked really poor as well. Mm. And I think it's so important that we do just grind out these victories against these teams at home because we should have won, you know, at least another couple of home games. And mm. um, it's just really important to, to mm. get those points on the board. And I was actually looking at the league table a, a couple of times, like just... You know, random, not like I was looking at footy on my phone. I was yeah, just like yeah. making a brew and I was like, I'm just going to look at the league table. Oh, four points. And mm. it just, it's pathetic, mm. but it, it looks a lot healthier than it did. So not sure the performance was brilliant, but it was uh, it was much needed three points, mm. definitely. I think it's interesting what you said there, like about the story of games, because I always find, I don't know what you two, but I always find like loads of like three o'clock kickoffs on a Saturday sort of go under the radar. Like the stories always, like you've got it right there, some about the Bournemouth game, we made the story out of it. Because most, because obviously the way it obviously would be three o'clock games and obviously the blackouts and mm. people not watching them live in this country, it feels like loads of those games just, I don't know about you two, but oftentimes I don't even see the goals of the three o'clock games. And obviously yeah. if you watch Match of the Day, that new fangled programme, um, if you watch match a day, you'll see <laughs> no. them. But a lot of the time, I don't go looking for those games either. So you, a lot of these games do just become nothing. They're, they're not... I, I just watch the three and a half. Yeah, well, that's it. Some, and that, 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 but, but a lot of the time, mm. it's just like you know, you you don't you don't pay it or you don't see the story because you just see very quick highlights. Mm. You just mm. see the goals. Um, so so there is that thing of like 
these games just come and go really quickly. They're not the live game. They're not. There's not all the hype and the presentation mm. of a of a you know where a, the four R four kickoff on a Sunday or the R five kickoff on a on a Saturday night. So these games just can be just really really bad games that nothing ever happens. Because I often think to myself when Everton are playing a game and it's like a must win or. You, there's a fear of slipping up or something. Like I really hope this doesn't. This isn't a live game because I just feel like the minute it becomes a live game on TV, the na- you know what I mean? Oh, the narrative goes up and the players will have actually done all these interviews and and it feels like suddenly like there's more on it than that. They can't cope. Yeah, yeah, but I, but I, I, I think that's like a, that's like almost like a mental thing, though, isn't it? It's like when it is that's the clock kick and you just think no one's really watching this. This is going just us. It's just yeah, me and you. We're just the ones watching. Just it. me and no you. No one's really asked. If it pops up, everyone won two one on final score. Everyone will go, oh yeah, I thought yeah, that's fine. Mm. It's like they're the games you just want to get so through. Bad this yeah. Saturday, then. Yeah, yeah, that's what, I'm, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. You did the games you just want to get through, get your win. Doesn't matter, uh, and everyone can be happy without there being mm. any hype or anything. It's it's like when suddenly it becomes a live game and all that pressure. Suddenly there's a spotlight on it and everyone's focused on I it. I feel like that's just you. <laughs> No, I, I don't know. You no, know no, I, no, there must be something though in the players when they see Peter Drury turn up with his reams of pre-prepared commentary for when yeah, the goals yeah. go in. Poems. And his soliloquies that he's got. And Michael Keane's looking at it going, oh, God. Peter's <laughs> here with his book. It's like Bob Monkhouse <laughs> with his old book of jokes. He's just yes. got this big list there of we go. things. But like no. the three o'clock games, I mean, I, was it was it Arsenal 4? No, Newcastle 4, Arsenal 4. Was that a three o'clock game? Do you remember years ago when they were 4-0 down? Newcastle yeah, yeah, yeah. Back well, was three o'clock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's potentially one of the best games of all time, but it doesn't really get talked about in that because it wasn't on Sky, so it was just, a, you know, it didn't have that wider audience. But I'm quite happy with Everton just being, you know, I, I used to moan about Everton not being, not getting enough airtime on, you know, mm. national channels and mm. talk shows and stuff. I'm quite happy with us just going under the radar and doing our own thing. Of course, I want us to <laughs> improve, but it just, because it, it annoys me when, mm. when, People who don't know about the club start, you know, chipping in about it. Yeah. it just gets on my nerves. Funnily enough, Sam, that's why Toffee TV was fun. Well, is, because yeah, Everton exactly. weren't anywhere. Yeah. No, it well, literally is. I yeah. know it's not a real issue at this stage of the season, but I, I do, you do wonder towards the end of the season when uh, there's the timings of the games. I know, like, at the opposite end of the table, it's been mentioned a few times about kickoff times and how... Um, you know, like when Manchester City might be being, might Liverpool would play the early game, and a Manchester, a Manchester City would always felt like they were playing catch up. Oh, okay. And I think it's the same with like, it's the same as like if you're the last game of the weekend and you know what everyone else's results are, mm. and you haven't, and that adds just that little bit more pressure That's on. Right. And it's, 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 it's all those little things, and that's why I'm, I am happy to just a Saturday three o'clock kickoff, stay under the radar, just try and get some wins. Doesn't mm. matter if it's good or bad. No one's really watching. No one can go, "Ah, you were terrible," or "You did this," or "You did that," because no one's really paying any attention. And I'm, I'm, I am, I am quite happy with that that's okay. for the that's, time being. That's, that's. Sam playing the drums there. Sorry, That's it sounds it. like I've, I'm saving dinner here. I'm just plugging my laptop in. It's fine. It just sounded like you were doing <laughs> Dave Fitty's, uh, you know, special effects. Yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't know. I think I was disappointed Saturday and how poor Everton were. I'll be honest with you. I just look at, like, Crystal Palace weren't great, but I could see what they want to do, where I couldn't see what Everton are trying to do still. And that, I know it doesn't matter, and I'm, listen, would I have rather Everton played great football and got beat 2-1. No, of course it wouldn't. I made up, we won. That's all that matters ultimately. But I do feel like we, we should be trying to play some kind of way where I just don't think we do. I think 10 minutes aside, Saturday was was dreadful in terms of what we're trying to achieve. And a better team, I think, would have beat us. But who cares? We won the game. We won the game 2-1. Uh, I did... It's weird, isn't it? Because obviously Ashley Young's done a thing about Seamus Coleman's half-time talk mm-hmm. and all that, and that that is a point of a uh, a point of interest to a lot of Evertonians of how come it took the captain to motivate you rather than the coaching staff or whatever or the players themselves. Mm-hmm. And it's like well, occasionally Seamus will, won't he? Because mm-hmm. he's probably as frustrated as everybody else there. Now I don't think there's anything wrong with that. No, I know. I know people will, whichever side of the, the fence you're on. With the manager, and a lot of people are on the fence. It doesn't matter. His defenders can can 
come out with the flags for him and his, his ones who want him out can still say, well, that I don't mm. include Saturday, doesn't count, whatever it is. But using using a player who's ingrained in the football club, that shouldn't really be a stick that anyone well, beats the manager with. It's a it's a it's a brilliant thing for Seamus Coleman to have that input. Well, just before I let I let Sam, I just wanted to put mm. this in. Is that there's a clip of I don't know if you've seen this clip. I think you've seen this clip. There's a clip of um, Jose Mourinho, and I think he's the I, th- I think he's the Real Madrid manager at the time, and they're getting beat one nil. Mm. And he stands at the he stands at the door of the changes at half time, mm. and he lets every single player go into the changes, mm. every single one, and then he get, gets the door and he oh, just yeah. shuts it and he stays on the outside. Mm. And he <laughs> said, and then he afterwards it was part of a documentary. And he said, I never went in. I'm not in there to be the voice. I just let them get on with it. So the captain, the captain, obviously, he said the captain just destroyed them. Mm. And they came out and they won the game. Mm. So it's not, this isn't a new thing. No, and it's I certainly know. not a new thing at anything. And I don't think anyone should go, oh, what are you doing that for? That's sometimes, that's, well, not that's good management, whether you like it or not, to just let the players go, what are we doing? Don't don't need that big overarching voice going, you were crap, you were crap, you were crap. Because that sometimes stops, I think, people from actually saying, rather than going, no, no, boss, it's him. It's not mm. me, it's him. Mm. Whereas I just think, a, 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 we've all been in changing rooms or, or whatever. Or I can picture Sam now in a room full of comics going, you, you, I was on after you, and the crowd were crap because of you, because of your jokes. I can see that happening. <laughs> he anyway. was still booing, booing you when I was on. Yeah, That's exactly. The spinal we were booing, joke, me. We were booing you. <laughs> Not bad. Um... So I think that's I think that's 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 clever to just stay out of the way mm. and just go and then maybe walk in with a couple of minutes to go and make right tactical change. You're coming off, he's going on, mm. and um, let's have. I, I I think when it comes from someone of your own who's who's, who's one of your peers mm. and he's your captain, sometimes I think that sometimes that, that feels more than the manager side of it can be like, oh, you're just picking on us or mm. we weren't that bad or whatever. You're just trying to save your own skin. When it's a fellow who's sitting in the stand who's got no skin in the game, mm. apart from like he loves the place and he wants to win because he's an Evertonian and he's one part of the players. I think that makes a huge... That can that can be hugely inspiring, and and, and I think yeah, I'm I'm all for that. And I'd rather have Seamus take team talks anyway. Yeah, me too. Um, Go on, I, Sam. No, I think that's a good thing because like different voices, you know, in leadership, you need to have different perspectives, diff- and just the different tone of someone's different voice. And if you've mm. heard the manager all week, you know, and the, and the manager's job is to pick the team and sort the tactics out. And I'm not sure he's doing the latter, as we've as we've discussed. Mm. But if you've had a p- poor performance in the first half, it is just a case of sometimes if you if you're self aware and, and if the players are aware of of the shortcomings or things they're not doing right, it doesn't need someone berating them and shouting at them because sometimes you know you know as an individual we all mm. know in in whatever job we do sometimes you go I, do you know what I wasn't quite at, wasn't quite at it there and I, I need mm. to just up my game or change the way I'm trying to get the job done. Mm. It's not like, like you say, Seamus has got this like incredible affinity for the club, and he doesn't even need to scream and shout. Just the way he talks about the club, he's just he's so he's so ingrained in the place. It's mm. not like Sean Dice is bringing in like a special guest speaker every no. half time, because no. then that would, I mean, that would be hilarious, wouldn't it? Who would be in, a like, special guest speaker? Sadly, I, I don't. I, 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 what like I don't know. I'd, I'd sort of push the the net further than just the football world, and I've like. Yeah, go on. I'd have Anyone? that Tony, Tony Robbins get him in, yeah. the big fella. Tony Robbins. Get him yeah. in and just talk about something motivation. What if you had the fella from Wolf of Wall Street and you went over to you went over to uh, Nathan Patterson and went, sell me this pen. What do you think he'd Why say? Why are you going to Pato? Just just because <laughs> it was the first name that came into my head. Just the first was, name that came into my head. He'd say, this is Everton, mate, pen. we don't get pens. That's what yeah, he'd say. That's what he'd say, yeah. He would, and he'd be absolutely right, Sam, as well, of course. Um, but talking of pens, mm. Crystal Palace, in my opinion, should 100% have had a penalty at 1-0. Yeah. What a stupid, reckless challenge from Tarkovsky. I was interested to hear your take on this. Because he'd done two. He got, I, he got up and then done Ezzy with the same tackle. I was interested to hear your take on this. I wasn't mm. sure which way you were going to go on this. Because there was one uh, Ashley Young did last week or the week before, and I thought that was a little bit silly in terms of what he did. Mm. And I thought this was a penalty the minute I see that the, was under the penalty. minute I saw it, mm. I was like, you No, know, like when you're at the match and everyone knows, and you just hold your breath yeah. and go, 
can we just get through this? And the fact that the lads stayed down mm. and then the ball went out and they all got a few drinks. Yeah. I'm like, this is like Ivan Tony a couple of yeah, years yeah, ago yeah. at Brentford. Yeah. They're going to pour over this. Mm. And they're going to... I was massively shocked was that amazed. wasn't a penalty. Was amazed. Absolutely it amazed. It game over that they mm. slotted it 2-0. But we got away. I also thought... You might have seen it differently because it was down your end. Mm. But you know when Pickford come like Superman and got nowhere near the ball and it went to the line and then Thingy hooked it off the line. The referee, he fouled the core, he has it happened, but the referee blew the whistle and went like that. I thought it had gone over the line. No, it didn't. No, and no, but that, we know at the bounced. time. Yeah, yeah. The weird bounce, like, the, Weirdly oh bounced. my God, this is going. You know, one of stupid goals, like, bloody. Yeah. And it, I almost, and the whistle went and he pointed straight away. We all went. Like hold your breath, and then obviously well, seen the core. I think down. that's a really interesting point. I'll, I'll come to I'll, I'll come to Sam on this. Mm-hmm. Sam, I mean, Jordan Pickford, right at the moment, he's getting a little bit of stick, um, and I can un- you can understand why because some the the same sort of goals have been going in, mm. but like the 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 day goal on 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 Saturday, I, you know the. Did you think he could come anywhere near that ball? Because I'd, I'd, go ahead, I'd just like to hear your opinion on that. Because, you know, he's froze. Ned? He's muted his mic. Froze. He's, uh, Sam, I've, sorry, muted. there was a drill. There was a oh. drill going off, so I just muted myself, but it stopped live now. Live podcast, so and I love it. Perfect, I mean, it's not live, but go on. You might keep be able the, to the drill in. Keep like the drill in. the most in. aggressive dentist in the world. Go on. It's but it was just that Foster, because you just you, you didn't just mute it. You just stay. You pretended that you had <laughs> flows. It was, that was tremendous. If you, I'm not being funny. If, we ever need, if you ever stop being funny... I can't imagine that'll ever happen. No. Apply for a waxwork <laughs> place as, as yourself. No, a live model, wouldn't it? No, yeah. just as yourself. Madam Two that. Swords are like, we can't quite get Sam Avery, right? Just rock up there and go, lads, I'm here. I'm here. I'm yeah. here. Go on, what were your I'm thoughts on that? Like the end of, it's like the end of Police Squad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wiping the yeah, banana I, I off know, your face. I, I think Pickford's had a funny, funny start to the season. Um... I thought he was great in the Euros for England. I thought he played really well. I think nope. I think he got a lot of criticism, mm. didn't he, for his, his distribution. And I noticed that towards the end of last mm. season for us, he was his kicking's not. It's always seen as like one of his strong points. But I think he's whether it's the way that Dice is, is asking him to play, or I don't know. But he's 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 not been as accurate, I think, with his kind of precision. Mm. Um, I didn't think he was a fault for the goal on on um, on Saturday. I think he's been a fault for a. Maybe not completely a fault. There's been a couple where I thought he, he should have. There was the goal that um, what was the goal where a couple of weeks ago there was a Villa, the, the Villa, the first Villa the goal. First that was one, it. Yeah. I thought he perhaps could have done a bit better for that. Him and Keane probably to blame for that one. Mm-hmm. But um, I don't know. I think I don't. I, I wouldn't hold him up for that that goal mm-hmm. on, on Saturday. Just on that Tarkovsky challenge though, that reminded me of you know when you're playing like FIFA and you haven't played for ages and you're trying to tackle. And all you need to do is do a little tackle. And you mm. press the wrong button and you fly yeah. through. Yeah. So he didn't need to do it. He just needed no. to tap no. the ball away. And he tapped the ball away. And then his other foot decided, it's like his two feet had gone. Right, mm. I'll get the ball. You just clear him out. Yeah. He just knocked him over. And, and yeah, I thought that was definitely a penalty. Mm. Mm. He did see that. He, he saw red definitely on that one. What, so the pick for the one, because loads of people around. I think it was because it was in the air for so long. Um, I wasn't happy with him. I'll be honest. I know, but no, when you watched it again, there's no way he could... at the time, right? At, at the time, I thought he should have come and got yeah, the cross because yeah. it was humble. Yeah, yeah. But it's the second action I'm not happy with. He mm. turns his back as gay, it is weird, yeah. and it sort of goes. It's like there was, was an, he... there was another goal yesterday. Was it yesterday? Yeah, in one of the games, and it was yesterday or Saturday. There was another goal that was similar. I was like, what's the goalkeeper doing? Yeah, yeah. The goal he sort of like turns him yeah, like yeah, he might yeah, and it's it's squeezed See, past. I'm not defending him, but. I... When see he, when it, it was hung up for ages, mm. when you watch it again, he's got no right to come for that ball. It's it's so because it's, it's in the air for long. But, that's, but you're right, you're but, right. But, but, but I think he do there. But he goes to get it, yeah, and then comes back. Yeah. And I think that's why they've told him to stay on his line so, because of that. Because he goes and he comes back, and then he's like his body's in a weird shape, so he's not set. Mm. And, and 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 people might disagree with me on this, but it's clearly they've clearly told him, or someone's told him to stay on his line. It's getting that thing though. I don't know whether you noticed it on Saturday. Two times he come and claimed the cross, and everyone exactly as if now like exactly th- no like I don't know whether the I don't know. But it's I, like that thing of oh you can come and do it. I know, it. I know. Once that's what that makes it worse, in, isn't it? You start going oh. That's what makes I it worse. I I just think that 
on that one, it's just like, just stay at home. Don't mm. it, let the defenders deal with it. It's in the air for so long. Yes, if he was six foot five, he picked that out the air. Did that no, did that one just before yeah. it was the same thing. It got headed down. Did we just clear it? I think we hooked it away. Yeah. They had and two. You it see. happened again afterwards, didn't yeah. it? Yeah, and it's like, and then Jai, because it's hung I know, I know, like, I know. It's shuddy because other goalies who were obviously just bigger just come and yeah, take them is. or get a punch on it. And I don't, I'm not a goalkeeper, so I don't know. But I just, when it was knocked out, because I, I was thinking, because it was in the air for so long, come and get or come and punch it. And then I've seen it back and being like, but his second action, it's a flit. It, that should, to me, that shouldn't be going in. But mm. anyway, it went in, didn't it? Mm. Um, we come out, I mean, two great goals in the second half. Dwight McNeil's on him right behind it. So the minute he left his foot, I knew it was in because you could see Henderson was getting nowhere near it. He's got to do more of that for me. Mm. That's his, that's the key strength for him being in that role. And then the second goal. But the, the big thing is the much maligned at times, Jack Harrison made a huge no, difference. Did, good run. I was made up Lindstrom started. I, I didn't agree with them getting taken off for half time because I thought that's an easy, that's the easy one to drag off. However, hands oh, up, I did. Harrison made a big, big impact mm. in the second I half. Thought, I, thought, I thought that was the sub that needed to take yeah, that's fair enough. He was so that's weak. He was so weak. Yeah. I thought, I thought yeah. he had a really poor, he, poor yeah, Harrison done great. Harrison done really, really good. And the, the goal, the winning goal, his touch is absolutely brilliant. Out the air, mm. takes it away. And then a right foot across early before they can get set. Luckily, Dom didn't go towards it because he was 83 yards offside. Uh, but great bit of skill by McNeil to flick it up and volley it in. And... Did he flick it up and volley it? He did, because yeah, I... at first I thought, I thought the did defender stretch. See, I... You see the other one from okay. the other no, side. No, no, I'm genuinely Gary, asking like, the question. I thought the, defen- I, I thought the defender had, had almost flicked it up for him. Mm. If you watch the one from behind, okay. he sort of goes okay. with his instep. Now, again... It, it could be a, an illusion, but it mm. looks to me like he, he does yeah. set it and then finishes it. But it's a great, a great volley and two good goals, Sam, which were very much yeah. out of uh, out of keeping with the quality of the game. Definitely, although Dwight McNeil's got that in his locker, hasn't he? Both mm. of those goals, you know, because yeah. he's just got such a good left foot. There's something about left-footed players generally, professionally, and also when you're playing on the park. Anyone with the left foot doesn't have a right foot generally <laughs> can't seem to play with the right foot speaking of someone who's left footed myself i could i could hit the ball with my left foot but my right foot was just for standing on and this is a stupid mm. thing to say but if dwight mcneil's right foot was 80 percent mm. as good as his left foot he would be a great player wouldn't he because mm. his left foot's decent but he's just so one-footed have you ever seen him kick it with his right foot even like a little five yard pass i don't think i've even seen him do no. that no, I don't think I've ever Every seen him. I don't think I've ever seen him watch. try because he's because in the first half he was he was doing that thing where he was having to go round uh, cul de sacs mm. on his left foot. Mm. You know, yeah. you, you know he's having a bad game when, or having a bad moment in a game when he was doing that because mm. he's trying to take people on, but he's just going round in little circles, um, like he was rowing with one arm. Um, yeah, his heat map must just be like a little sort of like <laughs> Olympic a circle. symbol. Yeah, very much so. Yeah, very much so. Um, no, I don't think I ever have, but I th- it's weird, isn't it? Because there's loads of right-footed players who, who don't touch it with their left foot, and we ne- I don't know whether we're, we're as critical as them, of them. I don't know what it is. It's, it's weird, it's weird, but you're right, it's because... Le- I there's... don't think the motion round the way he... No, did. that's the weird thing, isn't it? But left-footers are so... Because there's less left-footers, mm. and the game, is, the game is almost predominantly played sort of on the right side. So when anyone's got a left foot, they seem stand to just out, they yeah. stand out mm-hmm. and they can get the the they get on the side that a, def- a defender or it a can play. be it can be the only position he plays. He can't play no, left, no, no. left side for us. He's too he's not quick enough or dynamic mm-hmm. enough. And we don't have a left back who is both of those yeah. things. So it's just it's just glare. No, it's no, a glaring it's... thing. But when he's on the right when he's sort of central, he's the only one who's got that in, in the team who can drive shots mm-hmm. in from 25, 30 yards and the first one's a hell of a strike, and I'd mm. be, and they might be, but if I'm the manager, I'm saying, Dwight, just get yourself half a yard and get them shots away. And if you don't, follow it in, because the keepers ain't going to hold them. Follow yeah. it in, but, you know. That first but, goal, though, he doesn't really welly it, does he? He sort no. of, like, Scott it. Sing, it's it, beautiful. A goalie, sc- very, very similar to a goalie score for Burnley against us at Goodison in the street end when mm. in COVID. With, it's sort of just inside of his left foot mm. and guides it into the top corner. Mm. It's a great goal, and he hit one. Was it Brentford last season? He hit one from similar range. It's at the underside of the oh. bar. So he, you know that that's a that's a key thing that he's got for us. And, and at the moment, he's the best player in there mm. to play in that position. Oh, you can't argue because obviously that, yeah. in Ti, 
on the left is is tearing it up, isn't he? Mm-hmm. Just needs a bit more of an end product, but in terms of running with the ball, he's he's the chief threat. But listen, we got over the line. We've won the Does game. Do you have a jacket with chief threat on the back of it? Just chief I'd like to or a cap, <laughs> a cap. You know the way they have like like you watch like Top Gun and they have mm-hmm. like you know the the cap. That's what it's got. Chief, chief threat. threat. Mm-hmm. Just mm-hmm. walks well, around like Finch the... on the back of someone's shirt on a stag do, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's... yeah. You, know, you have someone like Fish Fingers, and you're like, I don't even want to oh. know why you got that name. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I believe Ned was walking around Leeds on Saturday night with a jacket that said Chief Threat on it. Possibly. Yeah. yeah. Possibly. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I can't I cannot confirm or deny that. No, no. Just not being there. So fair play mm-hmm. to Ned, mm-hmm. fair play. Sounds like the sounds like choosing Leeds on a Saturday night so is a brave decision. Mm-hmm. Anyway. It sounds like a really like bad gang in in the uh, Greece, doesn't it? In, in the Warriors. Threat. Yeah, yeah, in chief the Warriors, threat. yeah. The Chief Why? Threat. threat. Because they were, like they had T birds on the back of the jacket. That was a gang, wasn't it? And it was a crap I was thinking of the country grease affair. <laughs> no, Sorry. no, no, you meant grease. I was I was thinking, like, hey, <laughs> why haven't they got their own like grease? No, no. You know, running mean? around with oh grease yeah, lightning. Yeah. Oh, John Travolta, <laughs> yeah. and Nicky and all them. Running around with, with no. bloody uh, sticks of feta or oh, aluminium yeah. on a stick. Changing that sticks of feta. That's <laughs> <laughs> a stick with a bit of cheese. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, you've got to be very wary. They are the cheese threat. The oh, they you get well, they're the cheese threat, sure. Cheese threat, yeah, absolutely. Cheese sure. threat. <laughs> cheese threat. Imagine in the warriors, though. You're absolutely right. Yeah, fair That's play. It. Very. I'm gonna get you sucker. I'm gonna tell you that right now. <laughs> Let's move on. Bella with the, the beer bottles going, Chief Threats, Chief Threats. <laughs> Finished, yeah? Yeah, yeah. No. You haven't seen the Warriors, have you? Strap, Clearly have not seen the Warriors. All, but you've not years. seen it, have you? You've just seen the... Since, you've, seen. since what? Since probably when I was about 11 or what? You never it. saw it when you were oh, 11. Right. It wasn't out when you were 11. I mean, I think it was. 1964 was... Early 80s. You need to Sam. start doing coffee TV watch-alongs and the Warriors should be the first film. Exactly. The Warriors. Sam, just briefly, because I want to get our football swing far too long on this, but Everton, <laughs> since the last podcast, Everton have been taken over in most senses of the word without it being fully ratified by the freaking group. Um, so if that is rubber stamped, which everybody expects it to be now, positive news? Yeah, 100% positive mm. news. Mm. But then I was burned by the last experience, so I'm just... <laughs> Keeping my yeah powder dry Absolutely. until it is, and I love that word ratified. Ratified by the Premier way. League. I want to be ratified all over the shop by by that news. Oh, why um, wouldn't you be? <laughs> if you pardon the expression. Oh, but yeah, I feel much more positive, and, and that's why even going into the game on Saturday, even when mm. it was half time, and I was talking about my train of thought going off in this general direction. Mm. At half time, we were one nil down. We had one point on the board. It would have been six games with one point. I still didn't feel particularly panicked mm. because I think without realising that the ownership saga has just been looming over my head and all of our heads for so long. And mm. it's the fact that, the, I mean, it's pretty much two years of, of not really having a direction as a football club and as a business mm. and just not really, you know, the same rudderless gets used far too much, mm. but yeah. that's kind of, it's perfect, perfect analogy as we're going into a stadium right next to a, a body of water mm. that we don't really know which way we're going. And then yeah. this news comes out, and and you would hope that just small improvements can start to be put in place. Even even you know early days when they come in, you just hope that there would be a direction, there would be a strategy, there would be you know changes in the in the playing personnel, and ultimately there'll be a change in the managing personnel, um, whether it's before the end of the season or, or beyond. Yeah. But you've just got to feel you've got to feel better that we're in this position where we're able to then look forward rather than just sort of panicking about the you know the, the next couple of weeks we can look long term and you know I, I just think that the future potentially could be so bright for Everton but I'm not allowing myself to think that just yet but there's a part of my brain going oh that could be there could be there could be good times ahead for us but we'll have to wait and see absolutely future so bright we've got to wear shades <laughs> hopefully Hopefully. Not quite, but we can squint our eyes a little well, bit. Well, maybe, yeah, and, and bear it. So, good, good, good. Let's hope it, uh, it gets done quickly. Could that be one of the names of one of your shows, Sam Avery, Ratified? Mm. <laughs> I, I think that's got like a nice little ring to it. I can see the poster already. That's it. Yeah. Just, just me sort of like looking absolutely ratified. Ratified. Mm. A big tick by it. Or a big, big stamp. stamp. The stamp. Big stamp. The stamp's over it. Just Sam there. Avery will ratify you. 
No, that <laughs> seems a bit sick there. Or a bit a bit porny. Is he? Yeah, I but I think ratified, Sam Avery, ratified with like a big stamp. Mm. And he's just if one of the letters has the stamp in the middle, like one of the like I don't know, maybe the R in the top bit. But the, yeah. the stamp. I think maybe I'm good. holding the stamp. I think mm. it'd be good. At this stage, I just want to bring Ned in to the equation. Because he's got... It's a bold he, move. Well, he had Chief some threat. animal news for Chief us last threat. week. The Chief, Chief threat, threat, Ned. He had animal news yeah. for us last week, and we never got round oh, to it. What a so I shame. promised him this week he would get some airtime on mm. the rat, the the ratification of animal yeah. news. It's so, still Ned, current news, though, because if it's from last week, it's not... It's won't well, be it, I, I, animal, animal news, news doesn't age as quick say, as other normal news. news. No. It's evergreen. Evergreen, evergreen content. content. So, I'd just like to hand over to Ned for the latest animal news. Um... Hello. Hi, Ned. Um, I, I, I think when you say that it's age, I, I think it may soon turn into world news, not mm. just animal news. Oh, okay. You well, let's the, stick with the animal news today. The, um, the, the, the the people have found out now that fish in tanks are... Um, they can look at their own reflection. Right. And they've evolved to learn... Um, and they evolve... If uh, only they'd pass it on to certain people. The evolvement... <laughs> has meant that they can now um, size up their opponents by looking in a mirror, which they, they couldn't do before because there's no mirrors in the sea. Um, that we know of. That we know of. So they've evolved Till to Till Sam takes the rubbish. <laughs> yeah. We'll come back to Sam and it's the trip to the team. <laughs> evolvage has meant now they can... The Evolvage? ...use a mirror. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and I just it just got me thinking, you know, not only have we created these false societies because we're putting fish with fish that... Shouldn't be with other fish, and we're right. putting. Hang on, who's this we? And we're giving, <laughs> and we're giving, we're giving fish mirrors, and they shouldn't really have mirrors. Yeah, you know they're using the mirrors against other fish. Are they going to start, you know, turning on us next and using these mirrors against us and go? Well, well, right, devil's advocate. I, I can see all the other fish in the mirror. Yeah, if all the fish get in the mirror together, we can go. I mean, we're quite big in the mirror. Let's mm. take on this human, and because mm. uh, they can use stuff that they sh- like, they couldn't. Fish years ago could never use a mirror, but now they can Do use a mirror. Do we know, though? Who's to say that soon they won't be using guns and all that <laughs> stuff? It's a, do we not believe it's a, bold it's a bit of a step from a mirror to a gun? Just feels like a stretch. I, I, you know, 50 years ago, if you told me... That well, fish, you weren't here. Fish <laughs> but carry mirrors, on, yeah. I said, I said, don't be stupid. Fish can't look in a mirror. Okay. But now so, they're using mirrors to their own advantage to right. take another fish. Okay, so devil's advocate. If a shark oh. looks in a mirror, then you've had it, haven't you? They're not fish, though, are they? They're not fish, are they? But uh, if a fish can look in a mirror, then I'm pretty sure if you give a shark a bigger mirror... But do we know? Is there any evidence that fish couldn't look in a mirror 50 years ago? The people said so. The people. The people who... who, who Right, so say a fish looks in a mirror. I mean, you're saying we've created false societies and we've put fish... with, But humans do that all the time. Yeah. So People put lizards in tanks. Mm. So how do we know? But, uh, you, but humans have, will... don't forget, humans have got more dangerous to become the prime predator since looking in mirrors. Cavemen never looked in mirrors. Do we know, though? <laughs> that's a, I mean, that I is, mean that's, that's, that's probably a fact. That's fact, but I do think they did go around knocking seven bells out of each other mm. without a mirror. Without yeah, a mirror. each other. But and since they've started looking in mirrors, they're now so do we know? on other animals. All right, all right. So nuclear bombs are because of mirrors. Well, sometime, well, probably someone one day looked in a mirror when I can make a bomb. Ned, so could you, you make the argument? A... Go on, could you make on, the sir. argument though if fish start looking in mirrors, then they'll be hit with the same wave that humans have been hit by, which is just completely obsessed with the looks and how they come across to other fish. So bef- rather than become a violent, they'll just start, you know, getting the turkey teeth. Yeah, well, a I, tan. I, it, no, because I, I think because we're the prime predator, I think we look in a mirror and go. Hmm. You know, there's nothing I really need. I don't need wings because we're already at the top, so I'll just start getting turkey teeth. But fish might look in the mirror and go, what what have, what have humans got that I've not? What have they got that I've not? Well, hair, turkey teeth for a start. Well, fish might go... Legs. Like, Different yeah, way of breathing. But they might go, mm, if I get my teeth done, that's not really going to help me take on a human. Mm. I'll evolve some arms and, some, some, and a nose. Wouldn't a piranha but... disagree, though? No, because a piranha will just go. Well, I, I'm the st- I'm still the one in the tank in mm. the mirror. If I evolve a nose and some arms, I can get out the tank and take on the human. But after I have legs as well, though, because otherwise yeah. it'd just be weird walking. Well, down if, the road if with I arms. well if I looked in a mirror and I thought well, I need to take on a human, 
but I'm not human. I'd, I'd probably go for wings because humans can't fly. Okay. All right, then. I, there, used I thought be a pet shop. there used to be a pet shop by Williamson Square years ago. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I, I, where Weatherspoons is now, I City think pets. it was. City well, Pets, there. yeah. That was it, City Pets. And they used to have one piranha, and it was in a tank that was mm. piranha-sized. So it was just there looking at you. And yeah. you'd go in, and it just be, it couldn't swim. It was just looking straight on. And I've never seen a piranha look so pissed off. Have you seen like, lots not, of piranhas in your life, that, that, I mean, no, I've not seen many piranhas okay. other than Fair this point. one. But this one, I, I could, as much as Ned's theory seems a little bit far-fetched, if, mm. if that piranha gets hold of a weapon, yeah. then we're all in trouble. Mm. The, the, the piranha's a good example because the piranha, obviously, it didn't have a a mirror, but what mm. it did have, it had it was seeing his piranha mates being beat up by other fish. So we, didn't, so we thought, hang on, I'm not having this. What's wrong with my piranha mates? They've not got so... They evolved teeth and go, mm, yeah. I'll evolve teeth to so become, you know, a bit harder. So now they're pretty hard in the ocean. Mm. But like like Sam said, if they're in a pet shop looking at you all the time, they're going to the 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 they're, they're yeah, start thinking, water, I'm, mm. I'm not having this. I know I've got teeth, but, mm. you know, they've got hands and stuff. So I'm going to start evolving hands. And stuff. Okay. Um, okay, thanks. That was it. not the animal news. No, it wasn't what I thought. I thought no. the, I thought the but, references but, to octopus hitting. Straight off the teeth. bat, I could see a problem there because we saw a video this week of octopuses mm. beating the shite out of fish. So octopuses yeah. are keeping these fish in line. Mm. Yeah. So, so mm. mirror or no mirror, the octopuses are like... No, you, but that's what lads. I'm saying. Fish will start using... You don't... You, no, no octopus has got a mirror because nobody's putting octopus in front of a mirror, are they? Mm. But if... If a fish has got a mirror and it's going, right, hang on, lads, these octopuses are taking the piss out of me. I'm going to look in the mirror and go, what do I need to take on an octopus? They might start going, well, if I grow, if I start evolving eight legs, then I can take on an octopus because we've got the same amount of arms. I don't know whether it's that easy, though. I know. Fair, listen, fair enough, fair enough. If, I mean, if a, if a fish, what evolving is. If a is. fish can get hold of a mirror in the ocean, then mm. surely an octopus with all its resources... Mm. I mean, it's got eight of them for it's a got eight, eight, No, because we decided... An octopus could have eight mirrors, the then we're all in trouble. who's having the mirrors. Because we're, pu- we're nobody's putting an octopi in a tank. An octopi. Yeah, but what you've got to <laughs> an think. An octopi. An octopus could <laughs> manipulate some of the plastic that we throw into the oceans to be a mirror. Mm. I you've don't got think to they've think. evolved to that yet. They've got eight That'd legs. Better, eight legs, it? and they smack shite out of yeah, fish. Yeah, they've evolved eight legs, so they've okay. got more legs. Okay. Fish some don't need legs. Some kind of marine animal could somehow mm. evolve to take on all that plastic, like you say, Baz. Mm. Like all that plastic and stuff that we throw in the rivers. Be like the eighty. Somehow become some kind of like Godzilla type beast mm? Mm? with mirrors but, and guns. Yeah. Mm? That would be that would be terrifying. But I don't think evolution happens. It's evolution. Ned's talking about evolution like it's like a to do list, and you just yeah. go, "I'd like to get fitter this year." Yeah, it's it's, it's not like it takes not millions quite. of years. To yeah. it's not quite. It's not like I wish I had three yeah. legs, and I, I reckon I'll have one by July. Yeah. Not going to start intermittent fasting, are they? And yeah. bloody, you know, <laughs> counting <laughs> calories to get evolved. High protein diet, and you grow yeah. extra legs. About well, yeah. we're evolving really quickly. Well, yeah. Some of us are. We're yeah. evolving very All right, let's move on, because that wasn't the news I thought. No. Sam, we were we have a show on a Thursday on Trophy TV Premier called uh, Round the Tower. And it, it, there's a format that you know we, we they quite enjoy. But I had a question on last week and, and it was brought to life because Ped had AI, access to an AI uh, image creator as we would we were doing this. But my question was which animal would look the best in a tuxedo. <laughs> so I'm going to ask you, because we had loads of fun, me, Ped and Jack had loads of fun with this, and Ped was was creating these images as we, we threw it. Yeah. And we, you know, we come up, there was a couple of crackers. I mean, the dolphin was sinister. Yeah. One dolphin, of the dolphin. Yeah. The seagull, no, sorry, the seagull the was the seagull. most cynic, yeah. sinister, wasn't it? Yeah. The seagull looked like he was ready. The We had, the gorilla looked incredible, didn't he? Mm. The gorilla looked cool. I think was it the panther that we agreed looked the sleekest. Yeah, was it the panther. Yeah. So, uh, if you could pick one, Sam, that you think would look best in a tuxedo, what would you go for? Well, I used to play a game on the Amiga five hundreds back in the old days. Belter called James Pond. Yeah. Oh yeah. Belter. And, and yeah. it was about a fish. He was yeah. like a, you know, double O seven or whatever. Yeah. yeah. I think the one I played was called the Codfather. As mm, well. Nice. Which is a common nice. name for fish and ship emporiums in Blackpool. Weirdly. Yeah. Mm, mm. But he used to, I think he used to wear a tuxedo, but he was a fish. But uh, moving away from the marine life, because yeah. I think we've uh, mined uh, that. Yeah, I think so. I would say. <laughs> yeah, I've got I, I would like to see a ferret in a tuxedo. And I'll tell you why. Okay. Because 
whenever mention whenever someone mentions a ferret to me, which mm. you know is very regular, people kind of say, does this, does this pop up regularly? People come up to me on the street and go, "Can we talk about ferrets?" And I say, <laughs> "Of course we can." I'm I'm always open. My office is always open for it's ferret chat. And uh, I don't know if this is just my memory, so please tell me if this is your memory as well. But as a kid, I remember. It seems like quite a lot, but it might have just been once and it might have just been repeats. But it seems to be a lot of fellas yeah. on talent shows in the early 80s would put a ferret down the trousers yeah, and just let the ferret just go bonkers. Mm. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if that's normal. I don't think that's good for ferrets. No. It's certainly not good for the fella who's wearing the trousers. No. I don't know what they were trying to achieve. Mm. They're just trying to show how hard they were. Yeah, I think uh, so. Pardon, pardon the expression. Pardon the pun, yeah. Yeah. Um, but because I, I associate ferrets with trousers, mm. I would love to see a ferret in a full-on tuxedo. I've just sent you a picture of a ferret in a tuxedo. Right. I want to see it. And obviously, see. we'll get Ned. that now. I've we'll just made it, it now. Get, that's oh that's how I roll. We'll get Ned to Ned's edit gonna, it in. Ned's going to put it on the screen for everyone to see. Oh, my see. God. That is beautiful. Isn't that beautiful? He looks sharp, doesn't he? And if, and if you just... look before that picture, you'll see. <laughs> yeah. You'll I've see, seen uh, that one as well. Yeah, you'll see the other picture of the uh, 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 of Ned. <laughs> <laughs> Ned in his Saturday gear. Yeah. That one's not going I mean, on the screen. Look at the ferret. Oh, look at YouTube. the ferret. Ned's, Ned's picture with the seagulls not going on the screen because that's The Ned's. ferret looks cool though, Donnie. Yeah. I mean, I think that... really, I'll be honest, I think there should be the gorilla, should be the panther and the seagull and the dolphin should all be put in. But the ferret, the ferret's looking amazing. The ferret's looking sharp. My favourite bit of that picture though is the because it, it's a ferret in a tuxedo and mm. it looks amazing and ridiculous mm. but then there's a caption above it it just says ferret in a tuxedo <laughs> so if you see that you go what's that oh it's a ferret in a tuxedo do you know what i love like, about that picture normal. it's just a lean it's, it's just leaning lean in, in. Yeah, it's a just lean, cool yeah. it's, just, it's lean. just like this is this is what i'm well, here all like day. he wouldn't x factor and this is his christmas so- single <laughs> that's it release. he's just ready he's ready <laughs> how's he put that on without looking in the absolutely mirror? brilliant um all right carrying on with this then mm. what about this if you could merge two animals together, mm. which two would you go for, and what what would you call it? What about that? What about them eggs? Yeah, oh, I mean, that's... have a chicken in there. Mm. Would you? Bloody yeah. chicken! You, it's funny you say that. God. What's that for? Ferrets like the bloody. Well, it, Sam just mentioned like X Factor, so yeah. I was thinking of like. Have you created like a one direction. Yeah, like one the direction ferrets. of ferrets doing their Christmas <laughs> album. Yeah, play. Put that on I as well. The ferrets went in many directions when I saw them on those old TV shows yeah. in the Yorkshireman's trousers. Mm. There you go. Rather than just one direction. Mm. But, so come on, two animals. Um, I don't know. A chicken and a tiger. And then, I'd what would you call it? A chiger? A... <laughs> or a chicken? A, a, a chiger. A chiger, yeah. Chiger. A chiger. A chiger. <laughs> Our biggest threat is from chiger. 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 Um, They're eating the uh, tigers in China. Chiger. <laughs> Imagine it. A chicken in it. A... So, how would, that, how would it look, Sam? Would it be like a would it would it have a chicken's head and a tiger's body, or would it have a tiger's head and a chicken's body? Because I don't know what's scarier. Ch- a a little, a imagine like, a chicken shape with a, a tiger's head. Mohawk. A chicken's mohawk. Yeah. A chicken's eyes. Yeah. It'd have the beak, but it'd have a tiger's teeth. Mm. But most importantly, it'd have some kind of it's it's that movement, isn't it? The, the movement, the, the like head forward head. Yeah. Like a the tiger's head was ready to go. Chicken bits coming at you like that. You'd, uh, you'd soil your trousers in no time, wouldn't you? Yeah, that sounds sinister. That, that doesn't mm. sound... Ned looking like he wants... Go on, Ned. I'll give you a go here. If well, you had to thinking... merge two, and what would it be called? Well, it wouldn't be a tiger because they've ultimately they've not evolved enough. So you're Okay, just Ned, the other if, you, one if you're coming in, chance. you've got to come in with two animals merged mm. and a name. Um, a feagle. Be a fish eagle. A fish, fish and an eagle. eagle. Because fish are pretty clever. They can look in mirrors. Okay. And I, you are really doubling down on eagles, that shite point, aren't you? Eagles are pretty... Um, <laughs> like, you've really, really gone like, to town with it. Eagles are pretty um, dangerous and... But you know, is it... Right, so an eagle beaky. can swoop in, obviously. But if you're giving it a fish, like a fish... Like, like what's the... No, it would still have... What's the makeup no, no, of no. the eagle? Uh, of the, of, sorry, of the feagle? It's, it's got a fish's brain. It's got a fish's brain. And it can breathe underwater. It's got gills. So okay. it, can, it can dominate both land and water and tank. I get, I sort of get what you're saying, but the makeup of it, you're not giving me the construction mm. of it. It would have 
fins, wings, gills. What head? Uh, an eagle's head, but with fish eyes because they're bigger. I see you and Sam have got. I'm, I just wanted the two bits. I'm be, going uh, right. I'm just it gonna would throw, be the size of a, a I'm going to throw mine oh. straight in. Right, yeah. it's a piranha, but but it's a rhino. So it's a rhino with a piranha's head. It's called a piranha. I like right, it. Right, it's called like a piranha. <laughs> Uh, you could also have it as a very expensive uh, drink in as well, is but it's a, it's a piranha and it's yeah it's got the it's got the, the head so the head of a piranha. So imagine the teeth on a rhino on a rhino's body. body. The power of the yeah. rhino. Oh, is it a the, water creature? It can do both. It can do basically anything you want except for fly. But it would terrorise the land it's a and double sea. Threat, yeah, it's a double it? threat. Oh, yeah. I thought about it, and it's got a cool name, a piranha. Yeah, it sounds like a brand of sport clothing. It does, yeah. That yeah. is it. That's that's coming dark. to. A, it's got a gonna got a pop up in Liverpool one, Pirano. <laughs> that's dark. That's the shocking truth. The shocking truth of Piranos. Telling you. What about a lion's head on a penguin's body? I mean, I don't that... think it would be able to walk. It just go like that, but you just see the lion's head bobbing at you. <laughs> I'm watching that, just waddling, what's, like Chris waddling. But what's, you. what's the purpose of it, though? Well, because lions have got like big teeth and they're quite they're angry, aren't they? But but obviously penguins are unbelievable at diving in water and, and just gliding through the water. So if you saw, if like a killer whale tried to get it like they do, shite hawks, come and get them. The lion could have a go at that, couldn't it? The killer whale would have to think twice, wouldn't it? That would not. That would not be in the circle of life. I know, but I'm just... It's a merge, isn't it? Okay. Could it be called a pion? Or a... Le- Lenguin? L- Lenguin? Lenguin. Lenguin. A blue whale and a hedgehog. <laughs> <laughs> a blue whale and a... Right, okay, so give me a bit more. I feel like a monster of destruction. But what would it be called? The, the... A bled jog? No. No? Okay. The blue hedge whale. Not sure it's it a blue like, whale hog. And like what's the makeup looks, of this? What's the construction of it? A blue whale and a hedgehog. Yeah, no, how though? You've got to give it us... It would have hedgehog spikes, but it could shoot them instead out of its face. Tell me that doesn't look cool. Penguin with a lion's head. I've just done it on AI. AI is amazing, isn't it? I know they say it's it, going to kill us yeah. and everything can and take And it probably over. will, and but probably at the moment will. we can have fun with it. We can have fun with it and create images of penguins a blue with, whale with lion's with heads. A, with a hodged back. What's and, a hodged back? You know, spikes and stuff. Is that what a hodged back means? Fire them. Okay. And it can fire them. No, you, have, you're throwing things in that don't work. have four arms. And no, a, and a no, 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 you ruined it. No, no you, you ruined, ruined it. it. No, you ruined no. it. It's just a simple concept. Giant dinosaur. Right, ne- How about uh, a grizzly trampon? bear crossed with an earthworm? So it's got all the power of a grizzly bear, but it can burrow through the soil. That's a horror movie, that. That feels like... But wouldn't I you go for, like, if you wanted to bottle through the earth, wouldn't you just go for, like, a badger? Not as quick, not as efficient. No, not that's okay. like I that creature think. on Horizon, the one that comes out, and you've got to... You fire yeah, the tremors. For a bit oh, yeah, don't want that. Don't want tremors. Is... Oh, uh, no. That's... Do you think that's... these animals, though, if you could create them, would feel... Would they be psychologically capable of existing? Because mm. I've seen dogs who are clearly just, like, you know, a, a, a poodle has been battered by some kind of big dog and, mm. and you get this weird like Frankenstein's monster type dog and even the dog just looks confused about what it is yeah and I'm glad they dogs those dogs can't use mirrors because they'd look at themselves and just yeah, that's be true. filled with self-hatred yeah I think Everton look and like remorse. they're confused with what they are at the moment that's mm. what are they a hybrid same with a mongrel no I just mean just as a club um Sam just before we go I did you know I noticed you posted a very proud looking pick of you going to the tip and obviously we discussed yeah. the tip last week so tip was what was the what was the the, the reason behind this why were you so happy to be at the tip and um, and what had you been tipping well i'm always happy to go to the tip and yeah. as we spoke about the other week and i think i put this in my post it's not just getting rid of rubbish it's yeah. emotional baggage that you are ejecting from your brain and you of feel course. cleansed don't you you do you, you do feel like you and, you know, nodding at all the other Sunday morning warriors mm. the, at the recycling centre, just like, nice one. Yeah. I just I just loved it. And nice. I didn't have a photo to put up with the post, so I just found yeah. the photo of me smiling. Okay. And then I realised after I posted it, I was, that was from a... I was, sat, I was sat on a farm at the time. I was going to so say... I look like I've got the most middle-class tip you do. in the world with you do. hay bales around me. Yeah, that's what it looked like. I was thinking, that looks doesn't look like a tip I've seen. But I was look. going to, like, pretty much every bin. I had, I had metal, I had um, 
what was it, hardcore and rubble. They were back <laughs> again. More yeah. of that. I had plastic. Yeah. I had uh, a little bit of cardboard. I even had some clothes that I put in the recycling thing. Love that. Love that. It was, Triple it was threat. Great. If you can check every every box there, you know, you've got non-recyclables. It's oh. brilliant. Because you've got a bit of everything. Mm. You're cleaning yeah. out, you know, very much like an Fully. M&M. Fully you know, cleaning Stacey out of Solomon up here, aren't you, just, you? You are going there. Oh my Solomon. God, what a Sunday morning. Oh my it's, God. Uh, you know what I mean? Solomon would be loving it. Yeah, she would Solomon. love it. Solomon. She'd probably just, she'd probably, they'd probably just kick out another kid. Probably. We've been the tip. Let's have another kid. Do you, Do you know what, what I mean? I mean I love, what We've I... got a bit more room in the house, love. Yeah, let's, let's have another go. kid. They just spit them out for fun, don't they? Well, I don't know where they spit them out for fun, but they have a good go. I think so. I don't think they've got That's a squash. Telly. Don't call them squash for no reason. No, well, he's squash. He's not squash. Exactly. You know what it's I mean? amazing what you can do when you don't have to pay your mortgage, isn't it? You're just like, ah, let's just have more kids. Just <laughs> That's it. Get rid of you the just go on a lot, of, a lot of programmes, but have you actually seen that one that she does? Yeah. Where, like, they take all the people, like, so, again, we are going to finish in a sec, but that programme, I don't even know what it's called, right? But I've seen, my missus has added Stay, on. It's now. called Stacey Solomon Cleans Your Shite. I don't know whether that's the real that's name. That's the name on the iPlayer. That's the working title. I don't think they've got that for the, the programme. <laughs> but essentially, they take the stuff to like a, a warehouse yeah. and they set it all up. Yeah. So you've told me you don't throw stuff away. How much of that warehouse would you fill, do you Two. think? Two of them. Two wear Would you like? Would you actually, just full of Everton gear? No, you know what? Would you actually like to see it though? Would you like to see your stuff in a warehouse to just go? Oh my yeah, god! Yeah, because it costs. We've got. It would mean that the license payer will have cleared my house, <laughs> right? <laughs> Showed me it, and then I'll have just gone. Yes, yeah, and all I wanted was somebody else to come into my house and, and clear, clear it all it for, for it. <laughs> and I have managed to get the license it payer be... to do it. It's right. Wouldn't it, Joke's on you, fools. Wouldn't it be mad, though, to see all, like, how much of that your gear... Like, not just you, yeah. every one of us, like, how much stuff... Could I like have... it when they go, right, you've got 17 plates with the same thing on yeah. it, and you were like, yes, I'm just, just last Been them. Most of them. Just yeah. last them. I just couldn't be asked. Keep six. I like you know what? what's what's mad is sorry oh, what's mad is, all that, look what's all mad is plates. there's about twenty seven plates in my house and I only use one. I use it, wash it, use it, wash it. I use don't it, wash believe it. you wash it because well, in here well, you've never right, washed sorry, the bleaking sorry, cup in your sorry. life. The washing fairy yeah, wash it. Right, okay. That's and then, more like and then it. it's it's ready to be used. Unlike again. Ned and Jack, who might have three cups of tea in a day and yeah. use three different cups. Yeah. See, I bring me on. Just leave them. Bring me on cup. Uh, no, we'll be in I mean, Sam, would you like to see that all your gear just on a warehouse floor? Solomon and, and Swash have turned up and brought a few of the mates to sort out for you. So you walk in the warehouse and go, oh my God, how... Very much like when you go on holiday yeah. and you tap that suitcase and then if you're staying in summer, your gear's everything. You mm. think, I've got to get all that gear back in my case and get it on a plane. And you think, how's that worked? Especially when you've got kids and there's, there's shite everywhere. But I yeah. think it'd be dead interesting to go into one of those warehouses and say, all of this stuff's from my house. Mm. That is mad. All of this stuff's from my house, and please, whatever you do, don't look in that box over there, because <laughs> that's Daddy's box. Imagine uh, that, yeah. Solomon going stuff. through. Oh, Joe, we I, should get one of these. <laughs> oh, look at this thing. I uh, <laughs> Might I, stop them having more kids. I, <laughs> <laughs> I threw... There's so many jokes I could make there, but I, I, Yeah, I leave it there, yeah. Um, I threw out so much stuff. I've got rid of so much stuff over the last, I don't know, three months. The, mm. the, the loft is just about looking empty now, and I found this old... Wow. A copy of Roy of the Rovers. Oh, that I was in when I was a, I was eleven. You were in it. it they used to. I was in it. There used to be a thing on the letters page. It said, "Make me a Rover." And what you had to do is get a photo of yourself, cut your head out, send it to them. And I sent it to them when I was eight, and they published it when I was eleven. Now that's only three years, but that is a big pivotal point of your life. So I sent it when I was in primary school. Hmm? They printed it when I just started secondary school, and everyone called me Roy for six months. And it was awful. <laughs> At least you were amazing. in it. At least I've you were in it, though. It's back in the loft now. And I'll if I, if I get up there again, I'll send you a picture of it. But it's, uh, yeah, it's, stuff mm. like that. The sentimental stuff, but there's so much stuff that you just keep. Yeah. Mm. You just don't want to throw it away, but there's yeah. just so much shite. It's mad, isn't it? It is mad, because obviously we were gone. We've been doing a bit more clearing off the, the draw. Um, you know, draw, well, you know, the draw that doesn't have to be a man's draw, it can be a woman's draw, it can be a, a you and I. You've draw. decided it's a man's draw, no well, one I, made that I just decision for that you. McIntyre. Um, never take anything. But yeah, I found McIntyre. a couple of keys which clearly went from mm. this house and stuff like that. So we, 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 we 
decimated that yesterday. I haven't finished all of it because it gets boring after a bit, doesn't it? But you do find 31 Allen keys and go, do we? Is there a situation where I might need more than this many Allen mm. keys? I hope not. But very interesting. <laughs> you sincerely never, hope not for you. You never know, do you? You never know. You never can tell. You can but. never have enough Allen keys. Well, apparently not. That's my draw. It's bloody made up with it. Right, let's leave it there for Ned Pipes back up with some more fish tails. Maybe we keep that for next week. Mm. Sam, big thanks as always, mate. Take it easy. Thank you very uh, much, fellas. Good to see you. Yeah. Let's hope we're, uh, we're doing it next Monday after another Everton victory Absolutely, um, yes. against the Geordies. Fingers crossed. Mm. Uh, make sure you like, subscribe, five-star reviews, all of that stuff. Keep spreading and sharing the word Keep about... Spread the news, as Frank Sinatra said. Um, yeah, about the 1878 FM podcast. Thanks for watching. See you later. Bye.